Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm talking about language analysis in this video, um, mainly aimed at GCSE English language courses, um, but I can also see why this video might also be useful for literature as well, particularly when you're commenting on things like writer's methods and language in a, in a literary text. So it might help for both. Um, I'm gonna be using the AQA Brighton Rock extract uh, for this video which is now a few years old. And in my experience, the majority of students tend to struggle with this extract, particularly the language question. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be using the crunch it activity, which I really like uh, and discovered recently, actually, um, to help students look for patterns in language and to appreciate the uh, word choices that writers will often uh, uh, make in their texts. So just to recap about what language analysis is, of course, what we need to do is we need to appreciate that specific words have been chosen for a particular effect and that these words have been chosen deliberately. Uh, we therefore need to um, kind of uh, celebrate the writer's craft, really, in terms of um, their skill in, in creating this uh, piece of literature. Language analysis is not about feature spotting, although undoubtedly it is useful to use some language terminology. But in terms of evidence, yes, you do quote evidence, but make sure that evidence is short and sharp and carefully and judiciously selected because you don't want to be copying large chunks of text out for language analysis or for any reading question, because when you're copying, you're not actually getting any marks. So the biggest question or, or the main question that you're asking yourself when you're looking at language is what does this word make you think, feel or imagine? And to give answers to any of those things would be creating an effect in readers. So I'm going to start this by showing you what language analysis is not. Um, the yellow bit here is using the Brighton Rock extract and you can see that all the student has done it has just copied out almost a paragraph. That yellow section is not getting you any marks at all because what are you doing with it? Nothing, you're just quoting it, you're just copying. And because this is an analysis skill, language analysis, the, the examiner is expecting you to take words from this yellow section and talk about them. Instead, in this case, what the student has done is they have just given a kind of a throwaway, quite bland point. This makes the reader read on. Um, please don't write that um, for any um, English question because it's one of these um, low level, um, quite hollow points that students make when they struggle to actually say anything um, uh, kind of more to do with language analysis. So this, this is not how to do it. Um, we need shorter quotes, but more effects, okay? And from my perspective, usually students quote because they intend to go inside that quote and they are going to quote it because it's significant to them. So you quote when you're gonna talk about it later on. This student doesn't do that. They quote and then don't do anything with it. So if they're gonna quote, for example, the new silver paint sparkled, they might want to talk about silver. They might want to talk about sparkled um, later on. So you only quote really uh, to talk about something inside that quote later. So here is the crunch it grid. Um, this is what I give out to students in my class. Um, and the text goes in the left-hand column. And in, as you can see here, in the middle column is the words that they select from each line of the extract and they write it in the middle column. And then the furthest right hand column is a word or words that they take further to develop the analysis even more. And that is practicing the skill of taking the extract, zooming in and being able to discuss specific words because you regard them important in terms of answering the question. So here we have the Brighton Rock extract. Um, they came in by train from Victoria every five minutes, rocked down Queen's Road, standing on the tops of the little local trams, stepped off in bewildered multitudes into fresh and glittering air. The new silver paint sparkled on the piers, 
The cream houses ran away into the west like a pale Victorian watercolour. A race of miniature motors, a band playing, flower gardens in bloom below the front, the aeroplane advertising something for the health in pale vanishing clouds across the sky. It had seemed quite easy to Hale to be lost in Brighton. 50,000 people besides himself were down for the day, and for quite a while he gave himself up to the good day, drinking gins and tonics wherever his programme allowed. So if you remember from the AQA Brighton Rock extract, that is the bit that they want you to use for language analysis, which is question two, paper one. So what I've done, and this is what sometimes is best to do to get this idea of three, is you split that into three little paragraphs, as I've done here. So to take this first paragraph first, and I've cheated a little bit because I've also included silver from the top of that second paragraph. It's a very high level skill in language analysis to look for patterns, sometimes known as semantic fields, or words that reinforce the same kind of meaning. And I've highlighted these three adjectives, fresh, glittering and silver, because they all have something in common. They all give the impression that Brighton is fresh and beautiful and bright and appealing, immaculate and tidy. Uh, at the time, it was believed that fresh air uh, had medicinal qualities and was good for your health. That's, I suppose, where the phrase to take the air comes from, because they Victorians uh, believed that it was a, it was the best medicine. So there's a sense here that, that Brighton is absolutely stunning and is absolutely immaculate, ready for this uh, holiday season or this bank holiday. So this is notice this this task, this crunchy activity, is always and already reinforcing to us a pattern here, which students might otherwise have missed. As we go into the second paragraph, we've got these three colours. Now this is a simile, of course. Brighton is compared to a Victorian watercolour, suggesting it's quite artistic and quite beautiful. Again, it's quite an idyllic panorama, quite idyllic surroundings and very appealing to visit. But we've also got bloom and health there, which is an adjective and a noun, suggesting that there's something beneficial here. There's something clean. There's something that isn't filthy. Um, bloom, you know, reminds me of flowers. Uh, flowers have connotations of nature, not polluted city areas where a lot of these holiday makers are coming from, a lot of these tourists are coming from. And the health, again, it reinforces that previous point about being on uh, Brighton on this day is almost having medicinal qualities. It's a positive thing to be here on this day, which is why so many people have come down for the day to the South Coast. The final paragraph, um, I've got here a trend in terms of how busy and popular Brighton was. So we've got the adjective lost, to be lost because of the amount of people there, but also the noun thousand or the statistic thousand, suggesting it was very chaotic. Uh, it was crammed and rammed full of people. And in that kind of situation, of course, it's very easy to lose your bearings and get lost. There's also a sense of chaos here. There's lots of different things going on. And it's a destination for lots of people. And of course, they want to keep those people amused by being able to visit lots of different things and being able to experience lots of different, um, you know, uh, activities and so on. So what this crunch activity does is it groups words together and helps students sometimes look for patterns or semantic fields. And in that middle column, you can also see um, I've also put in some of the terminology. It's not an exclusive list. There are other things you could say. Um, but that crunch it column, that middle column, uh, are words that students would write in themselves based on what word they regard to be most important in each line of that extract. So it's interesting and uh, what, what students can come up with because they can come up with often lots of different ideas. But importantly, it's developing the idea that we have to zoom in and we have to um, you know, grab some some words and be able to discuss them in a little more, more in a little bit more detail. So going back to an example, and this is not a full answer, but again on the left hand side we have what not to do with language analysis, and then on the right hand side we have something that's much better. You can see already by the, by the blue bits that the 
evidence is much more judiciously selected and, and specific. Uh, this is a student that knows that their marks come from interpretation and analysis, not from copying. So the student says Brighton is presented as an appealing destination, which is emphasised through the semantic field of freshness and beauty. The adjective silver, glittering and fresh suggests that Brighton is vivid and bright. The writer is implying that the seaside resort is appealing to visit because it's immaculate and tidy. There is the belief that fresh air is medicinal and good for people's health. So to be by the sea in the fresh air has a positive impact on the body. Um, and again, they might write something similar like that again for, for another word or words. So the example on the right hand side is much better. Um, but specifically, look at how they're quoting. It's shorter, it's saving them time, and they're going to get a lot more marks because they have a, they're, they're trying to zoom in and comment on specific words. So you could try the crunch activity, um, perhaps with a text that you have found challenging um, in the past. Students, in my experience, do tend to find this Brighton Rock one more challenging for language. So this might help you um, engage with the language of the extract and um, be able to write some more effective language analysis. Thanks for watching and good luck in your studies.